Good morning, it's Norma Cowie here with Norma Talks. Today, well actually I should say, I woke up at three o'clock this morning, so I feel like I've been up forever, which is not really true. Now tomorrow morning I do have to get up really early, but I guess I was doing a preliminary run. So I am speaking today, or talking about, whether we procrastinate or we move ahead, I've just got Norman Talks moving ahead. Maybe, and I should explain the process of how I came up with this. I was wondering what I was going to talk about today because I know next Wednesday is um, the reading for December because that's the last Wednesday before the month begins. And so I went to my tarot and three symbols came up and it made a story as cards do for me, makes me stories and they teach me things and they show me different aspects. For those that are interested in the symbology, I'm just going to show you the cards and then you'll, you can follow a little bit of what I'm talking about. The first one I got was the two of wands. Now the two of wands is contemplating a new, this is already here. Now we're looking at a new thing and that's a contemplational stage of thinking. Then came the chariot, which again, if you look, there's the village behind. He's ready to step out. Not moving yet, but he's ready to step out. And then came the full, completing all motions with faith. So when we put this together, one of the, <coughs> as we look at how we contemplate. So we want to do something or something new is coming along and we have this idea of maybe we do this or that or the other and so that's the contemplation stage. And often in this stage is when we, we kind of agree to go along or we procrastinate. Procrastination is often our own fears, our own doubts. Our, you know, when we're looking at something, we don't really trust ourselves and we're not really sure, whatever. I mean, I've done that many times when I've had new things come up and some of them I, I regret when I look back, I think, hey, you know, you could have gone for that. But I didn't for a lot of different reasons. I wasn't as secure as I am in myself now as I, I way back then when I was first getting out into the world. So when we have an idea, we usually run it through a lot of scenarios and we, we our fears come up, our indecision comes up. If we talk about it to other people, some will agree and some will be cautious. And so we do all sorts of considering as to what, how, when, you know, it, it, it all goes on. And very often the decision is made then. Do we go ahead with this idea or, or do we not? But not always is it made then. Because the next part of that is to go ahead is we have to leave behind things because if the life, every life only has so much hour, so many, or let me correct my English here, so many hours and can only handle so much depending, you know, for many years I had a husband, two children growing with the needed things. And, and so I had to fit business stuff all around that and my career and doing teaching at night and, how do you handle all that? So when something else comes to you, does it fit in? Can you fit it in? And what do you have to give up to fit it in? All those questions go on inside yourself. What am I, what's going to happen? What are we going to do? And so you, any idea that you have, and it could be a great idea, but you still will procrastinate on it because you're not sure how it fits, how it fits in with everything. And so it's like, and sometimes beginning new things is scary, you know? So it's, oh, what do we do? Go ahead or not? But then there comes a time, whatever the situation may be, where you decide, yes, you're going to go ahead. Now, in going ahead, when we look at the chariot, it's about leaving behind what's behind you and to move ahead. Now, the chariot in itself is not moving. It's still stationary. Those first symbols fight us. Sim, seven symbols of the higher arcana there's no movement whatsoever in fact it goes quite a way before we actually get movement but it is preparedness 
to move ahead. It is a sense of knowing that we want to go ahead and the direction that we want to move in and how we want it to do and what we want to do. And we get a lot of clarity at that point because in a way what we're doing here is that we've made a commitment, <coughs> excuse me, a commitment. When we make a commitment, it means usually that we're ready to move ahead. We're ready to go ahead in that direction. And, it, and then there's, yeah, there's, a, there's some more steps, but it's like, it's a big one of saying yes. And, and I have spoken on just how important decisions and then commitment to the decision, because you can make a lot of decisions, but you're not really committed to them. Commitment is the big thing. And that in the chariot, when it's ready to move forward, it is a stage of commitment. It's like, okay, though we're not moving yet, we will go ahead. Uh, we're ready to proceed ahead. And if you're lo ever looking at all the symbols, which um, I write the journey out in my book, Tarot, uh, Tarot, Exploring the Patterns of the Tarot, three tarot books, so I get them confused sometimes. So anyway, it's all about how it fits. We're sitting and ready to go. And the symbol actually that follows the chariot is the strength card where you're actually working with your life and you're getting the strength from above. And that fits in with the fold. The fool represents faith. And it's one of the things I work a lot with my transformations uh, people in creating a trust and faith in themselves and in life and the high, what you might some people call the higher power of what the higher power is, the direction of that. What do you believe in, in other words? Some people just believe in themselves and their abilities and what they can do and how they can get there. But many of us have a belief in a bigger power, a, a power that works. Um, I talk a lot about the loving energy. And when I found that many, many years ago and knew that it had to come inside me and be a part of me, um, I, I utilize that. But like everyone else, I sometimes get in my head and, and, uh, you know, then I run into other issues, which I did last week uh, because I got into my head about some other stuff that was going on. So anyway, faith, faith in life, faith in the power. Now, whatever you call the power, you could call it God, Allah, divine being, Mother Earth, um, Buddha. Uh, there's many, many. And I know in the Hindu, uh, Hindu religion, many gods and goddesses, which some um people pray to work with it's like there is a, another force that you can utilize to get you where you want to go one of the elements i love teaching about the fool is because he's walking off a cliff now there's a lot of symbology in here he's carrying a rose he's got a uh from the hermit who has a um I can't even think of the word, but like a, a halping pole or whatever. Um, walk, like a big, long walking stick. We'll put it that way. And a, on the back of that, he's got, in the full, he's got his karma. He's got it over his shoulder. And he's um, got the laurel wreath of victory, the red feather, but which comes from the sun as well. So, like it's a lot of symbolism in here. And then right at his feet, he's got a little dog yapping. Um, back and well, you presume he's back because the dog is kind of dancing away. And here he is, lost in his dream, ready to move off the cliff. Sometimes when you go to do something new, that's what it feels like. It's just like you're going off and you're going to jump off the cliff, and but you know that it's okay. No matter what it happens, no matter what occurs. It's going to be okay. So if you procrastinate, you're never going to know that. You will only know that it's going to be not achievable because you haven't given it a chance. You haven't given it, I'm going to say a go, which is often some people say. But it's like the beginning part is the scariest part. Once you're involved in the process of creating whatever it is that's different from what you're used to, 
that was when things get to be, um, things begin to unfold and you get to deal with them as they come. Now, this time last year, I didn't, I knew I wasn't feeling very well, but I didn't realize where, what this year was going to bring as we are coming you know, like last December when I did my, and I've talked about this before, when I did my year reading for myself, which I do every around, around the 1st of January of every year, just about every month after the first couple of months, it was acceptance, 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 acceptance. <laughs> I remember reading that way. What on earth am I going to be accepting? And and it was like onward. I mean, it, we're just about coming out of that phase now. I was, uh, thank goodness, November and December, they have different words. But it was like all this acceptance. And if you have been following, well, you know, I was diagnosed with this melanoma on my arm I had it removed and then it, it came back worse <laughs> and so now I've been into treatments which have had some little side effects here and there and but it was like it's just accept Norma this is a journey and in that journey I came across a whole level of transformation because I had to figure out how come this has happened to me that I've already worked with some clients and they're really happy with the results because I finally figured out what I was missing about really getting into the subconscious mind. So it's like, again, it's like contemplating, leaving the old and moving ahead with faith, knowing that no matter what, everything is in its right place. It took me years to learn that no matter what it is, it's in the right place. Because you're either experiencing it, you may not like some of those experiences, but it's adding to who you are. It's adding to your experience. It's adding to the sense of where you're heading. And it it's like coming forward in a whole different direction. Just a second, I just have to drink water here. I still have this horrible dry mouth which affects my talking especially when it's a little bit longer than five or 10 minutes. Now, as we coming and approaching January, which is just over a month away, once in a week, basically, a few days, maybe 10 days. Don't you think it is that? You begin to think about if you're in January, I already had somebody say, are you putting on a, a workshop to make, um, you know, these life, um, God, my brain is gone today. <laughs> That's because I've been up since three o'clock in the morning. But it's like I, I used to lead workshops every New Year's Day where you cut out the pictures from magazines and paste them as to what you wanted for the coming year. And someone had found hers and just she said, uh, oh, I'm just wondering if you're doing a workshop. Well, I really don't. And then right now, until I know I'm in full health, I really calculate my energy a lot because I do get tired. And people who have been coming to the mental mind treatments for found out I give myself half an hour for that because there's a lot of psychic energy I put into those. And so I really watch my energy right now because I'm in the healing. And for those, again, that I know many of you have been listening and following what's going on, Tomorrow, I should have a lot more news, and that will come forth, I'm sure, on Sunday. So by Sunday, I'm going to be a happy camper, or maybe not. I believe I'm going to be a happy camper. That, that's how I've been feeling, because I've had more and more energy and clear and things like that. So we'll see. So we've got busy, busy day tomorrow. I had to laugh. Why am I waking at three o'clock? Because tomorrow morning I have to be up and ready to go very, or very, very early for me. Anyway, that's beside the point. What I want you to understand is this. Life is a continuum. You just don't do one phase of your life. Or if you do, uh, that's kind of, Sorry, but I have a judgment about that a little bit on bo being boring. But it's like we have stages of our lives. What I was doing as a teenager, what I was doing as a 20-year-old, as a 30-year-old, as a 40-year-old, as a 50-year-old, a 60, they're all different. So there needs to be some 
understanding of change. There needs to be understanding of maybe when you're young, like I know when I had those kids and work and, and, and study and because I was still studying metaphysics at night and then I was teaching metaphysics. So it was like, go, 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 go. But I had lots of energy. I was in my 20s and got turning into my 30s. And then I began, then I began to produce large psychic fairs and busier and busy. And the kids were just growing on up and beginning to have their lives. Now, then there comes a time when things change. Now that changes in various, varying different points for different people. And there's sometimes when I'm doing readings, I'll talk about people that changes things that they're going to be facing. I'm not talking about so much today, but to be aware that what is your next phase? What are you leaving behind? And what are you moving into? contemplating where you're going. How do you want your life to be? What do you want to experience inside? Do you want to be happy? Do you want to be contented? Do you want to feel fulfilled? All of those things, usually people, when you're younger, don't think about it. You just live. But as you get older and there's more time and more space and you're needing to make different choices, different choices, what begins to happen then is that you got to let something go. You can't do it all. I know people who think they can just do it all. And then they usually crash and burn. Unfortunately, their health gives away or they even, you know, we've got different kinds of health issues. We've got mental health or physical health issues. We've got emotional issues. And if we push and push and push, without having any faith, having any connection to a power that's bigger than yourself to support you, to give you the essence. Do you think I could have done this journey that I've been on this nearly a whole year? Well, without realizing that there's always a divine message in it. There's always a plus if you look for it. Or I wasn't look. I was just saying, how come I've got this? I don't understand. <laughs> well, I understood as soon as I found that there. I found the key to get down into that subconscious with my clients, really into the subconscious. And I would not have ha found that. I would not ever in a million years have thought of the answer to that if I hadn't had to go and look for myself. I have found the fool, this beautiful little symbol here, has shown up in my life many times because I've had to step out from what is accepted, step out from just being a mom, step out from just doing this or that, stepping into something different. And each one had its own scariness about it. And yet... At the end, because nothing lasts forever. That's the whole thing. Nothing lasts forever except your soul. Now, I listened to a broadcast this morning. Um, and I was trying to figure out how I could get this out. And uh, because she, this gal is off planet, but has lived on Earth. But she, she's young and she's off planet. It's quite an interesting story. My son put me on to this, um, I don't know, podcast comes up, like just like I do. She has hers. And she, I watched, listened to it because she was talking about star seeds. And I have my thoughts on things. And, and, we'll, and I have to say this, when you're listening to somebody who's saying exactly the same things that you believe in, it's really nice. And she was, what she was referring to was the journey of the soul, actually. And she explained it exactly as I have come to be taught it, seen it, experienced it, exactly pretty well the same. And that we're here with our incarnations. And, and also some of the work I'm just doing with some new clients is like, having them become aware of so much that they carry today that has come from other lives. We forget that. 
we forget that we've actually come from another planet or we've come from an, another time before we even got here. It's one of the things I like to look at. What brought you to planet Earth? This is a different planet. This planet is not like most planets out there. Most planets out there are mental, very mental. Here is an emotional planet. And what happens to a lot of my clients come in, they don't want to deal with those emotions. They just want everything to make sense. Well, emotions don't make sense. And actually, it's our feelings. I didn't mean to go into this, but I'm going in there now, so I'm just going to work away with this a bit. Your body talks to you through feelings. If we can name them, the body feels heard, they relax. Because we repress them, they scream. They push harder. And they become from feelings, which is movement, to blocked emotional energy. And that's when people find me, which I'm very happy for because that keeps me alive. <laughs> and so it's like that whole element and knowing and having faith in the direction you want to go in. It's like this morning, I'm, I'm up early, right? So I'm like, oh, I'll just go and see what uh, this gal has to say today. <coughs> Excuse me. And another little drink of water here. And to hear your own belief and attitude, which you know is not wide, widely accepted. Most people think I'm really on the edge somewhere. But I've been there and I've seen it. I've been gone back and seen where we come from, this essence that becomes your soul. I've seen the other planets and, and spaces, not only just planets, but spaces. I've seen them through readings. I used to do following um, the journey of your soul right back to the beginning and then back again. Because Earth is not an easy place to live on. It's not. Because it's not mental. It's not governed by me. People think it is. But it isn't. It's an emotional planet. The Earth is alive. As far as I have come to believe the Earth is totally alive. And it feeds this energy that we call love. And it's there. But that's me and my ideas. But it was so good to hear this morning this gal talking about and i was just followed the whole story and went yes same thing as what i say but a little went off a little off topic but it came to me because with this tarot reading that you know where do i go because of and you know you're always welcome to write in or get hold of me and say you know i'd really like you to talk about this or that or the other but it's like anything you go to do, you're going to think about it. That's the contemplation stage. You can going to consider it, look at it, figure out, you know, what do you have to give up? Because if you have a full life, you can't just add things because you get weighted down. You've got to give something up. What do you want to give up? And then you, when you got it sorted in your head as to yes, and you got your emotional commitment to do, then you're prepared to move off. But bottom line is you've got to work with your face. You've got to know that you're supported by this love vibration I talk about, whether you think of it as guides, whether you think of it as whatever, there's a feeling of support and love. And it's very easy to get off that track because your mind gets busy and it thinks, and then you, and you take things in and you forget to take time to go inside and remind your body of the love vibration that is there all the time. It's like being aware. You could you could have a stain on your table and you get so used to it that you don't see it anymore. So it doesn't get cleaned up or changed or whatever. Life is like that. Very like that. So I want you to really contemplate already begin contemplating sorry, my wording again, as you're coming up to the new year as to how you want 2024 to look like for you. What be your goals? Where do you want to go? What do you want to achieve? And what do you need to let go of? What is making you, holding you down? What is 
having you feel not alive and, and excited about what this life brings. All these things are really, really important. So I want you to think about that. Because we need to get ready now. Six weeks, end of year. Think about that. End of year in six weeks. Six weeks is a pattern as far as I'm concerned. I deal in six-week vibrations for people all the time. Now is the time to begin to think how you want 2024, which is an eight-year balancing your spiritual or your mental and your physical world together. Very important year, eight years. Now, just want to, next Wednesday on Norma Talks, I'll be doing the December reading for our North America, as what I usually do on Wednesday, first Wednesdays. Mental mind treatments. Um, I've been, while I've been this recovery phase, I found a half an hour of doing the psychic and, and the mental mind treatments. And um, but you can text me, you can email me, you can get hold of me and tell me what you want the mental mind treatment for if you want to give me your three numbers you can otherwise i just ask for them and they come to me and one of the things we're noticing is that numbers do seem to keep on uh, showing up the same way a sunday thoughts the same thing if you want me to comment on something because i know quite a lot about different metaphysical things uh, if you want me to comment on it and I know something about it, I will comment on it for sure. Because I'm always looking for topics. What looks like why I did today. I went, oh, okay, Wednesday's coming. What am I going to talk about? I have a wonderful tool. It's called the tarot. It, it helps me all along the place. And mostly reminds me, keeps reminding me that I'm never alone. That the universal love energy has my back inspires me it pulls me up if i feel down but it's always there and everything always works in the place so i'm just before i call it off they have two people who've made comments which i appreciate yvonne says thank you and cecile says hello host i'm glad to meet you here i'm glad you are there here too though so lots of love have a good day um i will be letting you know on Sunday how tomorrow goes when I have this big day talking to surgeons and some of my big doctors finding the results of a CAT scan. And I've got thumbs up, hopefully, totally. That'll be really great because everything is coming together. Blessings. You have a good day and I'll see you Sunday.